In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I don't honestly remember where I was, but I can remember visiting a family a while back, and I had been invited inside the door before I was invited to have a seat and begin to visit with the adults. The mother had disappeared off into the kitchen, and there were these two young children playing in the living room. And the youngest was at that age where she was just able to walk but not able to talk and just kind of moving around, bumping into things. And her older brother was just a little bit older than her. He could walk and he could talk and they were there together and the little boy had something that the little girl wanted. And so the little girl reached for it and the little boy being who he was, pulled it back and pushed her away. And when he pushed her away, she fell on her bottom and she began to cry. Well, the little boy dropped whatever he had and he ran and he kind of squatted down around her and he put his arms around her and he began to pat her on the back and he said, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. And of course the mom heard the child crying and she comes running in from the kitchen and the little boy's going, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. And the mother picks up the child and the little boy looks up at his mother almost with tears in his eyes and he says, it'll be okay. And she says, yes, honey, it will be okay. And the little boy looked at me and he says, it'll be okay. I think that message that that little boy had for his little sister and his mother and me is the same message that Jesus has for his disciples and us today. It'll be okay. Jesus had spent the last week of his life with his disciples and the night before they had been in the upper room and they had celebrated the feast of the Passover. And at that feast, Jesus tells the disciples a third time, I'm going to be handed over. I'm going to be betrayed by one of you. I'm going to be put on trial. I'm going to be whipped and beaten. I'm going to be crucified and I'm going to die. Peter says, that's not going to happen, Lord. We're not going to allow that to take place. We will fight for you. I will stand beside you with my sword. And Jesus says to Peter, Peter, I know your heart is in the right place, but before the night is over, you will deny me three times. I will be betrayed. I will be beaten and killed. You will deny me, but do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. The scripture that we have for our gospel is one that many families choose to have read at a funeral. And it's interesting when we received a phone call in our own family this past Monday that Roseanne's brother-in-law, whose son died Monday morning This was the verse that I had chosen that we would read at his service. And I did not at that moment know that it was also the one that we would have this Sunday morning. In thinking about what I was going to say about Alan, a book came to mind which was written by my favorite author, Ernest Hemingway. And the book, is entitled The Old Man and the Sea. And I thought about that book, first of all, because Alan loved to fish, but more because of the message that this book has. It's about an old man who lives in Cuba, and he goes out fishing each and every day, and whatever he catches, he brings back and he sells, and that's the way he provides for himself. 
and he has this young man who's probably no more than a teenager that goes out with him in this small little skiff to do their fishing. And there are many other fishing boats that are much larger and have a lot of people on the crew, but Santiago does what he can. And they've gone 84 days without even having a bite. And now the young man's family is telling him that he needs to leave Santiago and he needs to get on a crew to bring in some money to provide for his family. And so the young man disappears. And on this 85th day, Santiago gets up and he is determined that today will be the day. He will not come home without a fish. <clears throat> and so he puts things into his boat and he sets sail. And this time he's going a little further out into the Gulf of Mexico. And he's going to lay down his lines a little deeper in the water. And before the sun rises, there's this bite that comes on to the line and it is so ferocious that it begins to whip the rope away and he reaches out and grabs it and as he holds it in his hands, it burns his fingers. And the fish on the end is so strong that he's never really able to get in a position and rope it off and tie it off. He's sitting there straining with his feet against the boat, his back is aching, his arms is aching. And for two days, he battles this fish, this great marlin, day and night and day and night. And finally, the fish begins to wear out. He turns downstream in the gulf, and slowly Santiago is able to bring him closer to the boat. And when the fish breaks the surface, he sees that it is so big, it's not going to fit inside his little ship. So he ties the fish off at the front of the boat and the back of the boat. For a moment, he rests in exhaustion and he has such love and admiration for this, this beautiful fish, this magnificent thing that he had fought for two days. He raises the sail and sets a course to home. But there are little trickles of blood in the water and it's not long before Santiago notices that there's a Miko shark coming. And he grabs his harpoon and the shark comes up and bites the marlin and rips a large piece of the flesh off and he fights it away, but in the process, he loses his harpoon. And now the fish is bleeding even more and more sharks come and he is trying as best he can to get into shore to save what he can for his, his family. But by the time he arrives and ties up at the dock, the only thing left of this wonderful fish is nothing but bone. There's nothing to sell. He's done all of this work and he has nothing to show. And so he stumbles up to his hut and there on his cot, he collapses in utter hopelessness. And yet while he's laying there, the people of the village come to see what, what is that thing down there by Santiago's boat? And they are amazed at the size of the fish that Santiago was able to, to catch. And at the very end, even the young boy comes and wakes him up and says to him, let's go fishing. The message that Jesus has for the disciples is that I know things aren't working out the way that you thought they were. And yes, I'm going to die. And yes, we're going to go through a terrible time but do not let your hearts be troubled. It'll be okay. It will be okay. And now John has Jesus talks for the next four chapters. It's called the Farewell Discourse. And Jesus is preparing his disciples for a time when he will not physically be with them. And Jesus says 
Don't worry that I'm not here with you physically. I will always be with you. And just so that you know, you will do great things, greater things than I have done, because you're going to continue the work that we've begun. And to make sure that you have the strength and the power to do that, I'm going to send to you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will guide you and comfort you and protect you. And not only that, but when everything else seems lost and everything else is going crazy, I promise you this, there's everlasting life. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. And once I have prepared this place for you, I will come to you and take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. It'll be okay. The work will continue. It'll be okay. God will not forsaken you to the grave. It will be okay. Has there been times in your life when you've felt like for 84 days you're working and nothing's happening? Has there been times in your life when maybe something good happened and you're about to, to see the fruits of your labor and suddenly the world begins to attack you? Have there been times in your life when you finally got back and you turned around and you looked at your life and there's really nothing to show for all of the hard work? And don't you just wanna to go to bed and thank God, this is hopeless. Jesus wants us to know, do not let our hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, and I will take care of you because you know, it'll be okay. Amen.